earth-shaking news. The president was having his portrait painted at the time, a portrait as yet unfinished. <laughs> National Adventure, and this week we're at the Little White House in Warm Springs, Georgia. Hi, if you haven't met us yet, this is Andrew, I'm Allison, this is Kiara, Carolina, and Chloe. We are a Georgia family, we love to explore, and we love it if you adventure with us. Franklin Delano Roosevelt built the White House in 1932 while Governor of New York prior to being inaugurated as President in 1933. Today we're at the Little White House. Admission into the White House, adults are $12, seniors are 10, youth are seven, and children under six are $2. While here you can take a two hour guided tour, it's offered to groups of 15 to 20 people. Normally kept empty for preservation, the shallow pools occasionally are filled with naturally warm spring water. The same pools used by President F.T. Roosevelt and other polio victims. This was his last hope of finding a cure for polio. It had left him crippled three years earlier. Into his presidency, FDR used the Little White House as a vacation retreat, where he's said to have visited a total of 16 times, often for weeks with each stay. In fact, it's said that FDR drew many of his ideas for the New Deal from his small town visits specifically the Rural Electrification Administration. Loved the bump gate. Just as we were entering up to the White House, you could see a bump gate. Now, usually these are used in rural areas to provide a barrier to livestock. It doesn't require the driver to get out of the vehicle. Just the gentle contact swings the bump gate open, allowing the car to pass through, which is pretty unique. As we entered towards the White House, the little White House, they have a servants area that we walked on up. We had a chance to see what the servants area would look like. They had a bathroom, you know, a very small living area um, and a bedroom. They've got a stove off to the side to keep warm. This was over your carriage area. So very cozy, very quaint. Uh, just enough space to feel spacious actually, like a small studio in a, in a city actually. But the views were beautiful. And off to the other side was a guest house, which is very similar. It had two bedrooms and one was single and one was double. The only difference in the guest house is that they did not provide like a kitchen. And from what I could see, they didn't actually provide a bathroom. At least not from where we could see because they did have it bordered and vacated off. So that was the servants and the guest area that was just up off on the hill. And then you walk down to the majestic little white house. There's a very long walkway that takes you up to the home itself. That's right. You can actually tour Franklin Roosevelt's home, FDR's home. It's been carefully preserved and much of it has been left just as he left it. The servants and guest quarters and nearby pools complex that have first brought him to the Warm Springs area. Because this is a tour, they've got the front door blocked off and you actually enter through the service area. And it gives you a chance to see where all the vegetables were stored as well as supplies. And then you go in through to see how Daisy Bonnet actually left the kitchen. And this was a very influential Southern chef. President Franklin D. Roosevelt loved the way that Bonner prepared greens. She worked for him in the Little White House um, from 1920 to 1945. And this was at a time when domestic work was one of the few means of employment for black women. So it was very, very prestigious and influential. She had hoped to restore strength to the president since he was living with polio. She cooked his first and last meals here at the cottage. A single piece of wood from a cedar tree that fell on his lawn. Used a pocket knife, took him six months to do it. But if you really treasure that, and when you enter it for the same amount you enter your entire house for, you know he really loved it. 
That's right, he actually has his boat with his name on it and it uh, is insured for the same amount as his house. He insured the house and the boat both for $5,000 each. So this was a very special boat to him. So special that Kennedy also acknowledged it and hired the same designer to design a boat for him as well. Unfortunately, Kennedy died before he was able to receive it and it is now in Savannah on display there. Warm Springs Foundation created what became the first and for many years was the only hospital devoted solely for the treatment of polio victims in the world. And the organization became the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis. Roosevelt continued for the rest of his life to be actively involved with this foundation. Even while the president was fighting the Great Depression and leading the nation through World War II, he still dedicated time to Warm Springs and its foundation. And frequently, important national figures with cabinet members accompanied him to Warm Springs so that he could meet on board with the trustees while continuing to run a nation and carry out his own personal physical therapy. He met with the patients and shared Thanksgiving dinners with them and the hospital in Georgia Hall whenever he could. His enthusiasm for rural electrification administration um, is what drove him to bring electric power to rural areas at reasonable rates. And that may have begun at Warm Springs. Roosevelt symbolized the connection by signing the REA bill into law at the Little White House in Warm Springs. Warm Springs is a place of pilgrimage for many. Democratic presidential candidate John F. Kennedy spoke here during his 1960s race. And then in 1976, Jimmy Carter opened his general election campaign at the front of the building. The Georgia Warm Springs Foundation granted the property to the state of Georgia and the state created a memorial commission. It's a self-perpetuating body, and it opened the Little White House to the public in 1948. Now in 1980, Roosevelt's Little White House and the historic pools, springs, they all became part of the Georgia Department of Natural Resources and state parks and historic sites. Presently, Roosevelt's Warm Springs Institute, which is adjacent to the Little White House, it's managed by the Department of Labor and is a vocational rehab center. It treats people with head, neck, and back injuries. Actually, any type of joint or muscle disorders, stroke patients, arthritis, and after polio syndromes. A whole wide range of birth defects. Today, the Roosevelt's Little White House remains the same as it was the day the president died. Music